Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist. Today is Monday, July the 24th, and some activities trying to develop in the tropics. So with that being said, let's go straight to the maps and the uh, tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center on this Monday afternoon. And there, well, there's Don moving away and slowly winding down as it moves across to cooler waters of the North Atlantic Ocean, soon to be nothing left of that system whatsoever. Now, there is one concern over here. This is investigation number 95. And this over here is a new area of concern. It's a, a trough of low pressure that's developing in the tropics. So uh, where will they go? And, and there, by the way, something else is developing over here in the extreme eastern portion of the Atlantic Ocean that has me concerned at this time. So let's take a look at the, uh, first of all, the satellite imagery. And there's the satellite imagery right now. And there's that trough of low pressure right over here. And uh, according to the National Hurricane Center, it will be moving toward the west, toward the southeast United States over the next couple of days. And it'll be moving into an area that's slightly uh, uh, toned for slow development. So they're going to keep an eye on it. But right now, I'm not seeing anything of any significance associated with this on the computer models. Same thing for this wave over here that we've been watching crossing the Atlantic Ocean. It is now approaching the Lesser Antilly Islands. It will produce some heavy rains and gusty winds across that area there. But I'm also concerned about this area way over here in the eastern Atlantic Ocean, south of the Cape Verde Islands, and uh, it is moving off to the west as well. Uh, the computer models are picking up on this, but the computer models aren't picking up on this at all, and a little bit on this, but again, nothing to be concerned. So with that being said, let's take a look at the computer models. And uh, here we have the, um, the uh, GFS model, the Global Forecast System, and there's that tropical wave over here, uh, just to the east of the Lesser Antilles Islands. And then that trough of low pressure just north of Puerto Rico, south of uh, Bermuda, there's Bermuda, uh, it's right here. And let's put this into motion. And as we go into uh, six hour increments here, you can see that wave in the Caribbean Sea moving across from the Atlantic across into the Eastern Caribbean Sea is not showing much development. And that trough, well, it's still trying to hang in there. Uh, this is at um, uh, late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. And going into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, that trough continues to move westward but doesn't show that much development and that wave in the Caribbean Sea is not showing much development either. And as we continue to go onward in time uh, to um, mid-afternoon on Thursday, there's that wave off the coast of the Southeast United States, uh, really not showing much in the form of development from the uh, computer model. And the other wave is just moving westward in towards Central America, showing no signs of any great development whatsoever. But let's go further east into the Atlantic Ocean. And there's that wave over here uh, off the coast of East uh, um, West Africa and the Eastern Atlantic Sea uh, Ocean. And uh, let's put this into motion. And now watch. Of course, those other waves kind of like get washed out. You can't even find them. But this wave starts marching westward across the Atlantic Ocean. And the GFS tries to strengthen this a little bit or get it a little bit better organized in the midway between uh, the Lesser Antilles Islands right here and the coast of Africa. Uh, this is for Friday uh, sunset. And then going into the weekend, it continues to hold on to this system. And then by uh, Sunday afternoon and Sunday sunset, it has it as a a possible low pressure system a depression developing uh, just to the east of the Lesser Antilles Islands and then continues to move it toward the west northwest and as you can see it tries to develop it but as we know with the GFS model once you go past about 200 hours uh, it starts getting a kind of well let's just say goofy uh, uh, it, 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 it tries to strengthen these things into storms uh, at this far out and we're up to um, 216 hours. Let's take it to 240 hours because that's where the other models end. And that's right there. 
and it brings it as a tropical system into the southeast coast of Florida at that time. So with that being said, let's go back in time and let's go back over and look at the Canadian model, uh, the Canada Meteorological Center and or Canadian Meteorological Center. And there's the wave right there. Let me bring it up a little bit so you can see it. There's the wave right there. Now let's put this into motion, see what it does. And it tries to develop it somewhat, as you can see, but then it pushes it north, northwestward uh, into the central Atlantic Ocean. Then it curves it north well off the, uh, well, east of the coast of the United States, even well east of Bermuda. So the Canadian model says, no, nah, nothing to worry about on this one, but just keep an eye on it. Well, what about the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting? Uh, that one usually has more information. So let's take a look at that. And the, the data has just come in and the ink is still wet, as we used to say on the paper. But um, here it is right over here in the Atlantic. Uh, and Eastern uh, Atlantic, and it moves it, well, it's trying to move it westward. It's hard to grab onto it. There you can see a bit of a trough of low pressure associated with it. And this is what, uh, Friday uh, early in the morning before sunrise, and then going into the weekend, uh, over the weekend, there it is right there. It's kind of like hinting at what the Canadian model is hinting at that it's going to be curving it to the north and keeping it well east of the east coast of the United States. So, well, there you have it right there. So keeping an eye on that, the uh, GFS model, it wants to uh, push it into our area, but we know that the GFS model has a tendency to uh, over-exaggerate itself once particularly past 200 hours, uh, particularly with the tropical weather conditions. So let's take a look at the temperature across the country. And today, again, we're seeing those values in the uh, 90s and the hundreds across the central plains. And of course, in the Southwest United States and, and particularly in the Phoenix, Arizona area today is their 25th day of 110 degrees or above for their highs. And it looks like more of that is on the way. Here we are in the low to middle 90s across the, our area of Georgia and Southern South Carolina. Normal high for this time of the year is 93 degrees. So we're having actually normal weather conditions. I was out cutting the grass this morning and uh, it was, um, well, it was hot, but it's, it's July and it's supposed to be hot. So let's take a look at the next couple of days. Let's, for example, uh, day number two, this is Tuesday. Uh, again, in the hundreds across the central plains, warming into the 90s, middle 90s in the upper plains, again, in the uh, well into the hundreds in the southwest. We're going to be in the low to middle 90s here in the southeast. Let's go into the uh, day three, which is Wednesday. Again, we're in the um, middle 90s here. Um, upper 90s, lower 100s in South Dakota, uh, approaching the, the upper 90s in parts of North Dakota. Uh, Southwest still hot. Phoenix has another day uh, going ahead for the next day after that. Uh, for Thursday, uh, we're in the low 90s, so we're not too bad here. Again, uh, Phoenix should have another day of 110 or above. Cooling off a little bit up in the Northern Plains. Central Plains still hot in Kansas and uh, over in Kansas City and uh, Columbia, Missouri. Temperatures in the hundreds out there, approaching 100 in St. Louis. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa, 100 degrees. And going ahead for Friday, uh, expect to see the temperatures again in the middle 90s across our area. Uh, 100 in St. Louis, out in the southwest, temperatures in the upper, well, 110, 111 degrees. Again, in Phoenix, uh, in the southwest, still very, very hot. Uh, going in for Saturday, uh, see what that says. And again, very hot in the central plains. Uh, still hot in St. Louis, but not quite as hot. Still, well, it, according to this, Phoenix might not hit 110 degrees by Saturday. Uh, that would be th uh, the 30th day, if it does get 100 degrees, uh, 110 will be the 30th day in a row. Uh, anyway, we're going to be warming into the mid-90s here, upper 90s, mid to upper 90s in Georgia and South Carolina. And then going into Sunday, we're going to be in the upper 90s, about 99 degrees here in Savannah and Charleston. Uh, Central Plains, again, uh, over in the um, central portions of Kansas in the 102 range, 97 in St. Louis. And Phoenix, 107 degrees. Well, it's going to feel cool to them if that's correct. Anyway, uh, let's look at something else over here. Uh, the forecast for the next uh, 6 to 10 days is average temperatures around our area to be above to much above normal. 
uh, and then just slightly above normal in the southwest with temperature with the precipitation below normal in our area, above normal in the uh, mountain states and northern plains, and then going into the um, uh, eight to 14 day forecast, two weeks from now, uh, we're gonna still be above normal here uh, in the Southwest. Most of the Southern states above normal, but look at the Northern states, near normal to below normal up in the Northeast portion of the country. And then uh, precipitation on the East Coast in the United States from the Mid-Atlantic Coast northward and then above normal up in the Northwest portion uh, uh, toward the Intermountain regions uh, in the um, Northwest portion of the country. Now, what about our area right now? Here we are showing some precipitation across our area. Uh, radar is showing showers and thunder showers uh, developing across the region. Now yesterday, look at this. <laughs> this was yesterday afternoon. The rain was coming down here in the heavenly backyard garden and I picked up about a half inch of rain out of that system. But as the system moved off toward the north, it really started generating rains across portions of the uh, uh, Buford County area. And looking at that right now, we can see, all right there, I'm gonna bring it in. Uh, over here in the northwestern and northern Buford County and into the northern and northeastern portions of Jasper County, this area right over here, they saw anywhere from four to six inches of rain out of that system yesterday. So their ground is totally saturated. Uh, there's the radar site right there at Grays, South Carolina, just north of Ridgeland right over here. Uh, but yeah, between Ridgeland and Buford and south of Yemassee, uh, four to six inches of rain fell in that thunderstorm there yesterday. And just southwest of Statesboro, about the uh, uh, two to three inches of rain, an isolated four inch rain reported in that area there uh, over in the uh, eastern Candler County and western uh, Bullock County, extreme northern tip of the Evans County area. Pembroke finally got some rain out of there. I know Pat Dixon's going to be very happy. Uh, about a third of an inch though, that's all that fell there. So let's take a look at the uh, satellite imagery from right now and uh, well, there you can see those showers trying to develop. Nothing significant right now. Yesterday, the, the satellite imagery was showing you know, lots of rain and precipitation across the area. But anyway, it uh, looks like uh, we're going to be seeing some uh, slight chance for those th showers and thunder showers today and then drying out for the rest of the week. Only a slight chance of any for those afternoon showers and thunderstorms. We'll see temperatures mostly in the low to middle 90s, which is kind of normal for this time of the year in our area. Uh, however, by the weekend and early next week, we are seeing temperatures to expect to reach back into the upper 90s, possibility in the lower 100s with that heat index again soaring above or to around at least 110 degrees. That's next week. So this week, the, it looks like a decent, well, for us, July uh, weather week in the end of July. So I'll keep an eye on the tropics for you and the rest of our weather right here on YouTube. And I'm also generating a, a video on what's up in the sky. You got lots of things going on up in the sky at night that we can see if the skies clear off. It looks like we're going to see some clearing weather conditions over the next couple of days. So stay tuned, as they say, right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.